It is time to introduce a few more new concepts which we can use to make better meshes. And we have already seen two important differences between meshes and sculpted prints. First and most apparently, the new technology gives us the freedom to create the meshes for the different levels of detail, and this can help us to care about how exactly the shape degrades in the distance. Then remember that sculpted prints have only a very limited set of possible vertex locations. So we constantly have to fight against unwanted vertex shifts, and thus we have not the full control over the final shape. These vertex shifts are not present for meshes, and so we can predict much better how our final shape will look. I can add three more properties to the mix. First, while sculpted prints have to be made out of quads, meshes can be made out of a mix of quads and triangles. This will help us to optimize our meshes. Second, while sculpted prints have a fixed UV map, meshes can have their own arbitrary UV map. And so the UV layout can be optimized for the object. And finally, sculpted prints can have exactly one surface texture, while meshes can have up to eight of them. This helps us to create mesh objects which can be customized much easier. With these properties in mind, we now start with optimizing the kettle mesh. Creating meshes needs a bit of planning. And it is often good to know how your mesh will later be used. For the kettle we want to make a customizable interior. We also want to avoid to waste resources on its lower part. And we want to keep its rounded shape intact, so that it does not get too blocky when the lower LODs come to action. So let us first define the texture faces. A texture face is one part of your mesh, which will get a unique texture and unique values for shiny, glow, bumpiness, and color. For several reasons we want to separate the texture faces by defining texture seams. So we create one seam for the interior. And another seam for the kettle bottom. And for getting some visual control, we will add three different materials to the texture faces. I am using Blender here, and I have already defined some materials in advance. The exact procedure for your favorite 3D editor is probably very similar. Please note that currently materials are used in Second Life only for defining the texture faces. Full material support will be implemented in a future release. Now let us optimize the interior. First we will remove the pole because we do not need it any longer. Then we will reduce the face count on the interior surface as much as we can. This part will be flat, and we do not need any extra face loops here. We can proceed on the bottom of the kettle in exactly the same way. Remind that we started with 1024 faces, and we are already down to 832 faces by now, and we have not even changed the visual shape of the object. Let us now concentrate on the upper kettle edge. We see a few very narrow edge loops here. We can safely remove them because they do not add any significant details to the shape.
Then we also can reduce the face count in the inner part of the kettle a bit by removing some more edge loops which do not help to define the shape. And we can do the same also on the outer part. And these optimizations get us down to 544 faces, which is about half of what we had before. We could get even lower in face count, but then we would start changing the shape significantly. But we want to keep a good visual quality. After we removed the edge loops, we can slide the remaining edges a bit, to get the face distribution more even, and keep the overall shape more rounded. Please note that sometimes during the process of removing edge loops adjacent to the seams, the seams get partially removed. But now we want to create our own UV mapping for the kettle, and this is the moment where the seams become very important, and it is time to fix this. I will create a default unwrapping based on the seams definition. The UV layout creation is probably very dependent on your 3D tool so I can only give you general advice here. What you see in this video is made with Blender 2.58, and the result is not optimal in several ways. First, we see that the kettle body is mapped to a circular UV shape. This is so because the unwrapper tries to map adjacent faces on the mesh to adjacent faces on the UV map. This helps to avoid visual seams in the final result. But in our case this is not a good idea, because we will get some hard time to apply any texture on this map. We prefer to get a plain mapping, and this will help us to texturize the body without introducing visible distortions. We can use two nice tricks here. First we will create a new seam, which enables the unwrapper to actually make a more flat unwrapping. But we know that our kettle is basically a cylinder, so we can use cylinder unwrapping instead of the default method. For Blender this works only as expected, when you are either in front view, or in side view. Perfect! Now let us take a look at the interior, and we see that this part is already nicely unwrapped. We can take any plain image and place a texture on this part without need to worry about distortions. But we see that the interior and the bottom are mapped to only a very small fraction of the layout. While this is okay for the bottom, we want to get more texture space for the interior. I can achieve this by simply scaling up this part of the UV map. Here is one example image and it is easy to adjust the UV map to it. This approach works only because the interior and the kettle body use two different texture faces. Remember that we have explicitly assigned different parts of the kettle to different materials, and this leads to separate texture faces in Second Life. I mentioned before that each mesh can have up to eight texture faces, and so far we only use three of them for the kettle and thus the texturing of the interior, the bottom, and the kettle body can be done with separate textures. We have already an image texture for the interior. We will later just import this texture to Second Life and apply it as it is to the kettle interior. But for the kettle's body and bottom, we will now generate a texture with Blender's Texture Bake tool. So let us assign the kettle body and the kettle bottom to one separate texture, and then let us start the texture bake. We see immediately a problem here, we get some dark shaded triangles on the surface of the kettle body. A closer inspection of the UV map shows the problem. In fact our cylinder projection created overlapping faces here. 
To fix this, we can simply move the overlapping faces up a bit, and then adjust the layout scaling. There are many alternative ways to unwrap your meshes, but I cannot cover this topic in more detail within this tutorial. But maybe I can give a general advice. Keep the UV mapping as simple as possible. We are now finished with the optimization of the base object. This will become the highest LOD mesh. Compared to the sculpted frame, we have reduced the number of faces by 50% but kept the overall shape almost identical. We have defined three texture faces, and we have created a UV unwrap which allows very easy custom texturing. Especially the interior of the kettle can now be textured with any plain image. Of course, we also can try to optimize the handle, but I keep that as an exercise for you. In the next part of the tutorial, I will take the optimized kettle and use it as the starting point for the three lower LOD shapes. Until then, have a nice day!